my very first memories at all are really related to the war, very much so. Yeah, it was scary, actually, very scary. My father was very upset and disappointed because he was too old for, uh, he was too young for World War I, but he was a teenager, but still too young. And he went through the flu epidemic and used to tell us stories about that but too old for World War II. And World War II was such a threat that every man wanted to fight for his country. It was so different than now. <laughs> Nobody wants to fight for their country now. Uh, but then it was so different because it was such a threat. And even I understood that at a very young age. I mean, I was five when the war started and nine when it ended. So my whole life was nothing but war. That's all I knew. I thought it, that was the way things were. And, and we had, the thing is, there were German U-boats off the coast here. That's documented. I didn't make that up, but I remember my parents went to uh, the Roney Plaza as Civil Air Patrol. They were part of the Civ Civil Air Patrol, they called it. They were basically looking for unusual lights that were off the coast that might, I found that out way later. I had no idea why they were going. And um, the, we had rationing. I used to be given the coupons, and I, we lived on 45th Street, and 41st Street was where Carl's Market was, on the corner. And so I can remember a loaf of bread was 11 cents. And, but that wasn't rationed, butter was rationed. So I could only buy a certain amount of butter. My mother would send me to the store because she didn't drive. My mother never drove until the Studebakers came out, and there was finally a car small enough for her to drive. Then she learned to drive. So, but she never drove, so she never went to the store, she sent us. So we would walk the five blocks up to the store and back. So I remember the rationing. And the, at night, there were blackouts, every night, so that nobody could see, you know, the city. Did and people patrol to make sure and enforce the blackout? I don't know. I don't know that. That I, I but you were very much aware of having oh, a curtain. Oh, uh, yeah, and it was scary because you, you couldn't uh, turn the lights on. And the headlights were uh, painted, the top of the headlights of the cars were painted black. And then at 6 o'clock every night we had to be quiet. My sister and I, we would nudge each other and whisper, and we still had to be quiet because the news came on. And that's all we had was the radio news. And then we'd have to listen to it. And there was Hitler this and Hitler th that, and Hitler got to the Rhineland, and he's crossing the whatever Rubicon he was crossing at the time. You know, we, I don't remember the actual, you could probably listen to newscasts from that time. But it was very grim, and my parents would be very upset. And uh, it wasn't, uh, that's how it was until the war ended. and. I remember my sister and I were listening to the radio. My parents had gone out for the evening, but we were old enough. I was nine, so she was 12. So we stayed by ourselves, and we took care of the babies, actually. <laughs> and, uh, and we were listening to the radio, and it came out that the war was over. And we literally danced around the radio. The war is over, the war is over, the war is over. You know, it was just a jubilant time.